In this video, I started training up a few new skills to vary my stats a bit, to see how that would fare. Given that one skill alone is clearly not enough to affect the rating. So this episode, I'll be showcasing a bunch more skills and account progress. I recently released a tutorial on how to write your own AHK herb cleaning script, and I'll be coming out with more tutorials soon. People have been writing AHK scripts for 18 years now. There's no excuse to say it's too hard. There's really no choice between arthritis and learning a useful skill. Also, make sure to stay till the end for the giveaway. I'll be running a giveaway every episode so you can't say I'm making money from botting. Between the cost of the account and bonds, I'm already losing money on this account. And I'm not exactly running a bot farm. I heard a lot of people saying their accounts were being flagged as winter Todd bots, even with less than 50 fire making. So it's a good guess that fire making is quite sensitive for flagging as a bot. It was simple enough to change clicking herbs to clicking logs. But I had to go through several iterations to get a script I was happy with. In the time it took me to make this script right, I literally could have done fire making manually to 50. But what's the point of that? So I can do winter Todd? Who wants to do that either? The low levels had a lot of issues trying to automate because sometimes it literally takes ages to light the log. So to test the script, I made a semi-manual mode where I press spacebar once and it tries to light one log. That's about a 1 to 2 ratio of body. Considering how awful a skill like fire making is, it really should be legal. The first method of clicking, I just had the tinderbox in the first inventory slot and then I'd click the logs one by one. The thing is, I'd run into issues of timing because the further the mouse had to move, the longer it would take and it would mess up the timing. I could make the mouse instant, and a lot of people don't use mouse movements, but that just makes it too easy. Limiting yourself is also how you unlock your full potential. A simple modification I made was putting the tinderbox in the 14th slot. This reduces the maximum amount of travel time, and so reduces the error rate. Thing is, up till now, I actually forgot the most important step when trying to write a script, and that is doing it myself manually. Man, I just hate fire making so much, I didn't even want to do a single inventory. Turns out, when I do fire making, I do this weird thing where I light the logs, then I'll pre-select the next item to use, and hover over the next item. The pattern I end up clicking in is tinderbox, log, log, tinderbox. And so I ended up with this new iteration. It's pretty obvious now just looking at it, that it can be improved by clicking the nearest log instead of using the old pattern. But at this point it's already looking pretty good. By pre-selecting, it eliminates the travel distance as a factor in the timing. So now I have better control over how to randomize the timing changing the click pattern, and now it's looking exactly like how I do fire making. Now you might be thinking, why bother going through all this effort to make a nice looking script when Jagex probably doesn't care anyway? Well put it another way, improving scripts is the game. Some people want to see numbers go up, I like writing scripts that look nice. Nice. <clears throat> nice. Just to take a bit of a break from bank standing, I went to train my thieving up a bit. For this, I adjusted the click box from a square to a rectangle to better simulate the area I would click the stall on. Also, to act more human-like, instead of randomizing every single click, I only randomized the mouse location once inside the rectangle and then I stop moving the mouse and just click the same spot. If you randomize every single click, it would definitely look quite strange. For dropping items, since thieving stores is a one-to-one -one action, meaning you steal once and get one item back, it's a simple matter of counting how many clicks I've made. I could do this more accurately by counting experience drops 
which I was already doing for fire making, or using another method to directly count how many items are in my inventory. But as long as I'm the only one here, I can keep it simple. Notice when I'm dropping I'm also using the click pattern that I used when cleaning herbs. Being able to recycle code is just great. The only difference is holding shift down while clicking items. On the topic of dropping items, something I've been doing recently is a better way of detecting items in the inventory without having to rely on plugins. I don't think JGEX is checking if I'm clicking empty item slots. In a previous series, I ran my macro recorder for hours on end, blindly clicking empty slots, and nothing happened to that account. Unless there's a lot of legit players who like clicking pointlessly on the screen, it means JGEX isn't checking for that. In any case, it doesn't look neat and tidy, and that's the only reason I need to improve my scripts. For now, I've basically got a setting to store the current pixel in the center of the square, and if the color of the pixel changes, that means the slot is full, and so the overlay changes. Some items might not work well if there's nothing in the center of the item, so I could up this to 2 or 3 pixels, depending if I run into any issues. If for example I wanted to detect grimy vs clean herbs, that would most likely need more pixels. And if I got that working, that would be very nice. Since I've already made the herb cleaning script, I can just run it again every now and then for some quick levels. Also make some good GP on the side, and while I wait for it to finish selling, I can go do other stuff. An addition I've made to the script, and from now on I'll be adding to all my scripts, is an input box for the number of times to run the script. Should have been something obvious to add to begin with, but now it's added and it's here to stay. I mentioned last video that you could use this script for sulfurous fertilizer, and here it is. You have to make sure the click pattern lines up correctly though, because you don't want to use a bucket of compost onto another bucket. The most natural pattern in my opinion is to alternate direction left and right going down the inventory. This is needed for getting Hosidia's favour to unlock fruit stores for thieving, while also giving a few farming levels. In the past, thieving bots never bothered with this step, but with the farming level changes you need 71 farming for maximum efficiency, making it almost unviable for bot farming. However, it also means that the bots that do slip through the cracks, and the manual gold farmers are probably making a lot more gold per hour. To update on my bot rating, it recently went a bit haywire, with a lot of bots suddenly being marked as real players, but once that stabilised, my bot rating was still significantly improved. No particular skill seems to be dominating, just seems that the more other skills I train, the less confident it is that I'm a bot. Of course, in terms of bot farming, all this extra work for very little profit would mean the bot detector plugin has done its job. Talking about not making profit, talking about not making profit, for this week's giveaway you just need to comment potato and what skill you'd like to see me try write a script for. The keyword is so I can easily search the comments and find the entries. Good luck and make sure to subscribe for more content like this.